It's, it's always funny, but I, but I always correct people and be like, it's really, it's not, what's funny is somebody doing something so wrong, and they shouldn't be doing it. And that movie was the first movie I saw kind of actually pull off the, the very delicate eye of the needle uh, at job of revealing that and making no jokes in there. By the way, who's seen uh, Silver Linings Playbook? Bradley Cooper just is, is astoundingly good. I was talking to the missus after we, we watched it. She goes, the cool thing is you're watching a movie about someone who may or may not be manic depressive and has just gotten out of a, you know, a, a laughing academy. And, there, and, and, and she said that what, what she really appreciated about what Bradley did was you could tell that he, whether he was playing something or whether he was living something, no, no matter what he was doing, you could tell that someone who, it, you could, she said it seemed like it was so hard to be in his head. And, uh, and I, I thought that was really cool. I'm kind of really enjoying what's going on in movies lately, you know? I mean, some of them, as usual, are flat out garbage, but then I find myself being uh, surprised, you know, pretty significant. Like recently. Um, I thought Lincoln was fantastic. I didn't see her. I couldn't believe it. You know, and people were saying, oh, it's, it's long. It's a bit of a history lesson. And I'm like, you know what? Like, <laughs> I, this, is, this is the guy who, uh, the, the scenes in it that remind, reminded me exactly of the same uh, brilliant scene where a uh, savvy director who made the scene between, uh, um, between Brody, between uh, Roy Scheider and uh, the, the, the kitchen scene in Jaws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where they're mirroring, uh, yes. with the child's mirroring the people of the big exactly. child. It's really great. Yeah, it was just great. Yeah, and also, I mean, I was like, it, it's kind of actually a miraculous piece of screenwriting and directing, and that they made a two and a half hour movie about a two and a half hour movie about politics and passing a bill that's completely engaging the whole time. Uh, and, you know, seeing, uh, I, I, I so much prefer a biography where you focus on like a little moment in someone's life. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty Who cool. hasn't seen Lincoln yet? Okay, it's really worth it. When's the next showing? <laughs> I'll fund it. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you like doing uh, parts more where you're, or do you get a particular joy out of impersonations? Because I noticed there's ones where you're sort of playing more, more yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like, you know, these sort of threads like in Hearts and Minds where you're sort of people are possessing you or right, chances right. are. Yeah, I can't really do uh, impersonation. Well, maybe it's just like transformations. Like, oh, yeah, okay, sure. Um, I don't know, what do I know? You know I <laughs> sometimes I, I, I think about it, I, I, I have some objectivity about the whole thing, but I just know, like I was saying before, it's like uh, you get an opportunity, you're with certain people that you click with the director in a certain way. You know, you're comfortable in the costume, whatever you know, stuff is that makes you feel okay in your own skin. And then you either have a good time and it sucks, or you have a good time and it turns out good, or you have a lousy time and it turns out great, which is the worst. <laughs> or you have a lousy time and it turns out lousy, which is like, I knew it would. <laughs> um, I don't have an example of the second to last, but maybe that's too revealing. Right, I know. Yeah, I, I am self-aware enough to not just start, you know, taking a battery ram to my own carefully built-up brand. <laughs> so annoying. Another question from the audience? Yes, thank you. Black and and I well I've been a fan since his early like I mean, like I, I saw *Lethal Weapon* I was like who wrote this? <laughs> who came up with this completely new take on a genre where someone's dangerous because they they're suicidal? That's the greatest. <laughs> um, and then when we were doing the first *Iron Man*, John Favreau and I used to call up. Shane Black. We made two, uh, we had two uh, lifeline calls. One was to J.J. Abrams, which was about a third act, kind of like crucial story engine thing that he basically fixed without saying much. And, um, and the other was uh, John Favreau and I went over to Shane Black's house and we sat at his feet. Uh, we couldn't afford him, so he asked in exchange uh, payment for him helping us with several key scenes. He asked for a piece of salmon. Well done, and some fresh blueberries. <laughs> After which we called him Blueberries, was the code name for Shane Black. 
<laughs> so, uh, for instance, in Iron Man, the scene where Tony comes back from captivity and calls a press conference mm -hmm. and then asks everybody to sit down and then launches into this odd speech about he never uh, knew his dad or what would his dad think about the choices he's made and all that stuff. All that stuff came from Shane. And um, and so then in 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 getting to do uh, Iron Man three to answer your question eventually, <laughs> it's just been this awesome experience. It's probably one of my favorite uh, working experiences. Iron Man three is going to be a a very 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 um, old bit of uh, genre film storytelling, and uh, correspondingly the interesting thing was, and this is speaking of cine family is, uh, you know, John and I did the first two together, then he branched off to do uh, some other stuff, and uh, we're looking for other things to do together. And then there came the very interesting point where Shane Black and I were calling John Favreau to ask him what to do. <laughs> and John Favreau reprises his role, yes. having directed the first two films. This is what can happen. Usually it's like, I'm never talking to those pricks again, or whatever, you know. Instead he comes in, he plays, he reprises his role as Happy Hogan. Happy has an amazing marketing Woo! movie. And probably the two best bits of acting in the movie so far from what I can tell, which sucks because I'm in every frame of it, <laughs> are uh, John Favreau as Happy Hogan, where I can't give away much, but it's ridiculous, and uh, Sir Ben Kingsley. <laughs> and a lot of that had to do with, uh, to wrap up the question, the way that Shane crafted the role for Sir Ben. I think people are going to be not like surprised, I think you're just going to be uh, reinvested in what a brilliant actor Sir Ben Kingsley is. <laughs> Starting to get bored of my own voice. <laughs> Happens. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Shane Black's writing too, particularly because Kiss Bang Bang is a new mixture of uh, both that quiet thing he's known for, which is the mixture of action and comedy, but also I think you pointed out something good, which is he really has uh, vulnerable lead characters. Where, you know, these aren't kind of impenetrable superheroes by a long shot. Uh, was there anything else about the screen, like the the writing that you learned from him specifically? Um, well, the nice thing about uh, Shane is he is a he is a library of of um, everything. Like he essentially, if, if you talk to him, he can just pull a book down off off one of his uh, one of his shelves and kind of tell you why he's thinking the way he's thinking about it. And he loves noir and he really really knows the uh, superhero genre and um, but I think the main thing is he's always looking at complexities within complexities within complexities he always likes it when the film kind of stops for a reason you can't understand and then kind of picks up and goes in a direction you couldn't have imagined and usually when you have a straightforward narrative about act one two three you know there's Tony Tony's in trouble where's Pepper Tony wins you know, so. <laughs> I just like, you know, by the time we were doing the second one, I was like, where's Pepper, right? Is that what Where's Pepper? Uh, so that used to be a big, a big thing that Favreau would say is like, is, is, does it feel too, where's Pepper to you? Yes, like, it does. Uh, so, please. I think people want to hear you more than me. <laughs> You're probably right. Shane Black is a, is a genius. The, the interesting thing is you can take a genius and you put them through the gristle mill of making a big studio movie. So you, you haven't shot a frame yet, and a year later you're absolutely exhausted and you kind of wish you'd never been in the industry to begin with because there's all these flaming uh, hoops you have to jump through just to get to shooting your first day. But the nice thing is, I think Kevin Feige and, and Marvel and now uh, Disney is they're aware that with Shane directing and, and me as the lead in this film that the lunatics have officially taken over the asylum. <laughs> and they are really, uh, I think, gentle and thoughtful and sophisticated in the way they corral us so that we can actually bring the film to market inside a couple years. You're, you're talking a lot about how to make intelligent mainstream cinema, and earlier you were talking about, like, Baby It's You, John Sayles. So you kind of existed in both worlds 
uh, throughout your career. Now that you're making, particularly in the past couple of years, you're making the big blockbusters. Um, right, is that is the goal more to try and make those smarter, or are you interested in sort of going back and also making little movies with that new kind of power to get something there? Well, all I would say, um, and I think I'm, I think I'm about to, to get the uh, proverbial yoke around my neck. All I'd say is the, the, the interesting thing about this kind of rarefied air and where I find myself is that once you're put in a situation where you're operating at a really high corporate level, you kind of forget that there's uh, anything else and you seek to protect that domain, which is really dangerous. So uh, without saying too much, what I'll be doing uh, next year is, is doing something much uh, smaller and more uh, intimate with one of my favorite actors of all time, and then I'll be joining up with uh, a director that all of you will be excited about and uh, retelling a fairy tale from a completely freaked out point of view. So <laughs> next year I feel like I'm going to do uh, basically terms of endearment, and then like it's just a complete commercial freak show, <laughs> both of which I'm looking forward to. Well, Robert, I really want to thank you for being part of this little freak show. Thank <laughs> 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 <laughs>